Hello again and welcome to the Climate Smart Africa podcast brought to you by ICRA with support from the International Development Association of the World Bank. In this episode, we continue with our conversation on unpacking the impact of ICRA in Ghana for the past two years. And to help me do this, I have with me Francisca Mate, who is the Deputy Director of the Ghana Meteorological Agency, and Gideon Sarkodie, a radio presenter at Adairs FM in Kintampo in the Bono East region of Ghana. In Ghana, ICRA is led by the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture, a research institution whose priority is ensuring a food secure future for Africa through generating agricultural innovations to meet Africa's most pressing challenges. My name is Mina Oku, and as always, you can be a part of this conversation. Do share your thoughts with us via email at ICRA at cgiar.org and on all our social media handles with the hashtag climate smart africa let me begin with you gideon what are some of the communication products or initiatives that have contributed to the success of icra in ghana and particularly what would you say has worked well when it comes to communicating with icra's core stakeholders i want to say that the initiatives or the communication products or initiative that really help the project to be successful is the ability of the project to collaborate with community radio stations in which the areas where the project is mm-hmm. being implemented. These radio stations are able to provide climate smart agricultural education or communication to farmers and also providing weekly and daily climate information service to these farmers. And I would say that it worked well, especially with the climate information service component and the climate smart agricultural service. Now, you see that when you talk about climate change, obviously, climate information service is a very essential part of it. And then farmers need to also adopt to climate smart agriculture. Because of the radio programs, you know, the, the project has implemented uh, communities where demonstration farms have been established to teach farmers. Mm-hmm. And it, it's very difficult to get other farmers from communities which are not part of the implementing community to know these new technologies that have been uh, shared with the other farmers. There's, the anticipation was that uh, the farmers who will learn and then go and teach the others. But if a farmer is not within the same community or a nearby community, yeah, how are they going to transfer the technologies to the other farmers? So it means that we ought to use radio mm-hmm. to reach thousands of other farmers to let them know this technology. So I think that uh, that aspect of the project has worked very well. In our weekly radio programs, you hear farmers from other communities testifying that they have adopted one or the other, uh, uh, another technology which is benefiting them a lot. They express joy, they express excitement for us bringing those things on radio for them to also adopt and it's worked well. And then with the climate information service, obviously, the farmers are overjoyed with it. Mm. We provide daily and weekly and even the seasonal weather forecast to the farmers all the time. And so they are happy. I recollect that um, at times when we are unable to even give the weather forecast, they will ask you that you did not provide us the weather forecast yeah. and we want you to repeat the forecast again mm. along the line. It shows that um, it, it's, it has really helped them a lot, very, very much. And then the other thing that I want to talk about is the ability of the project to bridge the gap, bringing mm. the GMET and the radio journalists together. Previously, it was difficult for uh, rural radio stations to get weather information uh, from the GMET. But because of ICRA, there's a partnership, there's a bond, there's a rapport, a, a relation where we get all the information that we need. Previously, it was difficult for us to even get a GMET officer an interview on F4 with a report. But because of ICRA, you can pick up a phone, give a GMET officer an alert that I want to talk to you for weather advisory or something, and then they are on it. And then 
uh, extension offices as well agricultural mm. extension offices oh. uh, have been been yes and i think that it is working a lot they are disseminating uh, weather information to farmers on daily basis and all that so i think that basically these are the initiatives or mm. the services that have made icra a very successful project in my opinion interesting i am a bit curious to probe further so you've talked about the role of um community radio stations, agricultural extension officers. You've also touched on the role that uh, the meteorological service play. But it's interesting that all of them is linked to the farmer. So it's like the farmer is at the center of all of this. But in terms of attitude of farmers, how was the attitude of farmers in terms of their information needs and how they prefer to receive information? Generally, farmers, uh, their attitude was that they need the information. Mm. They need it constantly, uninterrupted. And they want it in a language that they can understand. They want it to explain to them in simple terms. They want it to be linked to their farming activities and their uh, cropping activities. And so if we're giving um, weather information, the farmers want you to be specific. Mm. Say in Kentampo, it's going to rain in Kentampo, but you know, Kentampo is so large. So which area, specific areas, should they expect rains? Because at times, it will not rain at the same time all over. Yeah. We realize that there's a little bit of a shortfall in that because the predictions were not indicative of which specific areas will have rain and which areas will not have rain. And then they will now want you to, for example, if you're giving the seasonal calendar, a seasonal forecast mm -hmm. they want to be specific in which month that they should expect wow. more or less Thanks rainfall rains. and they do not want to have these things set or brought to them or given to them in a complicated way they want to have it in a simple terms it will rain it will not rain mm. the weather will be hotter it will not be hotter yeah. and the effects of it on their farming practices so th their attitude was very positive in receiving the information but they also had the way they wanted the uh, the, the information to be packaged to them and their information need is that they need it on daily basis, daily basis especially for the climate information service right my final question to you in terms of language and you talked about it in your earlier submission but how has language particularly impacted the way the farmers these farmers receive the information you share with them have you had a situation where you have to for example switch from the english language to a local language or a language that's most preferable by them because the weather information is given to us or provided uh, we receive it in english mm. it is packaged in english or so it is now for us the broadcasters to now use the most popular or commonest language to send the information to them so for example i would read the weather forecast in english and also um sort of like uh, interpret it in the local tree language because mm -hmm. it is the commonest language that uh, most of the people can understand and speak so i do not only read the report in english i'll report it in english and then sum it up in p or explain it in p what it means and then if there are advisories attached to the weather report you also need to explain the advisories in the local language for them to understand many thanks Gideon that was quite a detailed breakdown Francisca let me now come to you so I know that the Ghana Meteorological Agency or what we call GMET here in Ghana is at the heart of weather forecasts in Ghana Let's focus a bit on satellites and soil, or what I call the connection between satellites and soil. Let's deep dive into how um, ICRA has been able to bridge weather patterns for the benefit of farmers in Ghana, particularly for vulnerable communities. The question is, what are some of the initiatives Ghana Meteorological Service introduced as part of the framework that supported um, practical decision makers for farmers? Number one. Before Ghana Meteorological Agency went on this partnership with ICRA, the ordinary farmer did not have in mind what we call seasonal forecasting. Okay. And not just farmers, but even most of the people on ICRA itself had no idea what seasonal forecasting was. 
so that was a major thing Jimet brought about to the table. Mm. So for people to know and see that forecasting is for planning okay. the outlook of how the season is going to be concerning all other things. And here we are talking about agriculture. So GMET has been doing seasonal forecasts all this while, but it wasn't this known. Okay. So GMET wanted to use the ICRA platform to train the farmer and all other people on how the outlook of the season was going to be. Okay. So the farmer or the vulnerable farmer should know that, okay, we are saying the season, is it going to be long? Is mm. it going to be short as in rainfall? And rainfall amount, is it going to be above the normal amount that they've been using to plant or below the normal that the rainfall amount that they use or just the normal? Mm. And so when we give those forecasts, are we saying that the beginning of the season is going to be late or it's going to be early or it's going to be normal? The cessation of the season, is it going to be longer or is it going to be shorter? So when we bring on board this, then the farmer would also know with the crop research on board, they would also now tailor and teach them what kind of appropriate crop they should plant. Okay. If, if we talk about shorts, the early maturing plants or long season, then they have and more above average rainfall, they have the flood resistant plants and then they can go on and on and on. Or are they going to go twice in the season, plant twice in the season according to the maturity of the plants? So we brought on board seasonal forecasting. Apart from seasonal forecast, we trained them to look out for the daily forecast. Okay. So somebody is going to plant and somebody is going to apply fertilizers. They also call it condemn. Okay. What are they going to look out for? If he, if he, he does it today and the rain comes, it will wash it off. And you know how these people go through, what they go through before they can get these fertilizers. So they look out for the rainfall every day. And we took our time to train them on what to look out for, how they should look out. For. So in doing that, mm. we gave them a WhatsApp platform. Okay. Especially to the agri officers, the extension officers, the directors. So we gave them platforms. Those who had smartphones had um, WhatsApp platforms where they get the weather every day. So they get the weather in the morning at 5, updated at 11, and updated at 6 p.m. for the next morning. Oh. So they will be watching it and they'll be updating themselves. And that's what will inform what they would do the next day according to farming. Oh. And this has been very helpful. They've been enlightened on the weather forecast. They've been enlightened on how to look out for weekly, for monthly, and for seasonal forecasts. Mm -hmm. And they are using to plan. So that is one major thing that the vulnerable communities have learned and what the Ghana Meteorological Agency have, the initiative they have brought. Again, understanding when we say normal, what does it mean? When we say below and above, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. And so we use this one to train the extension officers for them to be better, be in a better shape to explain the forecasts, daily forecast and seasonal forecast to the farmer. And you can see that they have now been very enlightened about it. In your earlier submission, you talked about the partnership between ICRA and GMET or the Ghana uh, Meteorological Service. What in your opinion, are the two key lessons we can learn from this partnership? And how can we further strengthen partnerships for delivery of climate information services in Ghana, particularly for the benefits of farmers? There are a lot, but um, the ones I'll talk about is this partnership of bringing GMAT on board have reached a lot of farmers. Mm -hmm. Just yesterday, we won the most efficient government agency in Ghana. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Thank you. 
it has brought a lot of things knowledge to the farmer the agricultural um, dealer it has brought enlightenment to them again because we were training the media too mm -hmm. the media was our voice and so they also learned every day to take these climate issues seriously and every morning they also announce it before people go to their farms and so the media too has helped a lot and the lessons that we can learn from icra partnership with the gmet is because icra brought gmet on board people in the uh, implementing zones have actually learned about weather forecasting yeah they have actually come about to say that okay now we cannot do without we cannot do without weather forecasting yeah. it is one particular important part of our lives so it is one lesson the second lesson again is that because icra also brought on board um these other partners who could upscale mm -hmm. The, the forecast to many people like the Isoko platform, the farm radio, they have also been able to propagate and disseminate the forecast to other people to our benefits. And so people have actually learned from this lesson. So these are the two major things I would say are big key lessons for Ghana Meteorological Agency with the partnership of IGRA. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director, for your time. Well, this has really been an insightful conversation. And thank you all so much for helping us understand what the impact of ICRA has been in Ghana. And a special thank you to every one of you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And you can be a part of it. As always, connect with us on our social media handles via the hashtag Climate Smart Africa. Until next time, let's keep the conversation going on building a climate smart Africa.